Hi guys, Sandy here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what you can be doing if you're playing with weaker players. Now this is inevitable, either you're introducing friends to the game or there's been a matchmaking service at the club and you're playing with either one, two or sometimes three weaker players on the court. But there are some things that you can work on that can help you improve your game while you're actually having that match so you don't feel like you're wasting your time. Because I know a lot of players feel like that's a complete waste of their time, but actually you can really progress your game if you focus on a few key areas. Now in an ideal world, you're always playing at a higher level, you're raising your game, you're improving your performance, but it's not always the case. And, and all clubs, it's not possible to be able to do that. So I usually say to the students, if you can get a good mix of 25% weaker players, 50% players at your level, and 25% playing at a stronger level, that's usually a good way to kind of work on different areas of the game and improve. But let us know in the comments what kind of percentages or who you normally play with, just so I have an idea of, of what you guys are going through. So before we talk about playing with weaker players, regardless of the players that are on the court with you, you should always have objectives for that day. Now, obviously, if you're playing an important tournament, your objectives are tactical and strategy, and you want to win that match. But if you're playing recreational games or friendly games, you should always go on with the intention of working on something because I know that most players, they don't have lessons. And so if you don't have lessons, it's even more important that you go on with a couple of objectives so that you know that you can improve your game. If you go on and you're not thinking about anything and you're just having a social, that's absolutely fine. But if you want to improve your game, you need to have at least one to two objectives when you step on the court. So when you're playing with weaker players, this is actually a good time to work on something technical in your game. Yet yeah, normally I'm saying in matches, you want to focus on the tactics and the strategy to win the game. But in this situation, you could work on technique. Now I don't recommend working on the technique for your Vibra or your Topspin Smash, because that could make it not much fun for the rest of the players, because you know the point will be over. Whether you get it in or you miss it, that, you know, that finishes the point. So it would be better to work on something technical like your body positioning around the back of the court, early preparation for your return, hitting good technique on your lobs, or for example, your bandeka. All of those are kind of focused on your technique and the result you know, does not necessarily have to finish the point straight away and you can still have quite a good game when that is your focus point. Another thing that you could work on with technique is accuracy. Now this is really important. I think, for example, the lob is a great shot to practice if you're playing with weaker players. And you can say to yourself, right, every time I lob, I want to make sure the ball bounces past the service line. And if you're at a slightly higher level, you might say, right, I want to make sure it bounces past that line where the intersection is between the glasses. And even if you wanted to, you could give yourself a kind of small quadrant area in the corner of the court that becomes your target. That's a really good kind of aim for the lob. Another example might be the bandeja. You say every time you're gonna hit a bandeja, you want it to bounce and then hit the side glass before it hits the back glass. Or whatever your target might be, that really depends on your level. But accuracy is a really good thing to practice if you're working and you're playing with weaker players. Another thing that works well with the accuracy is also giving yourself a tactical challenge, yeah? So if we're looking at the lob, an, an example might be, you're only allowed to hit one lob per point. Yeah, so that means that you've got to choose a really good ball to hit that lob on if you're gonna hit accurately into the corner. And that also brings in the tactical element of shot selection, which is really important. The other thing might be to set yourself a challenge, for example, with the return, to say to yourself, right, I'm not allowed to miss any returns in the net. And, and as long as you're thinking about this and giving yourself an objective, it will help improve that part of your game. Now, when it comes to choosing these areas of the game or these focus points for your match, this is normally where a coach will help you decide that. And that's exactly what we do with our students is we watch through their matches and we say, right, you know, this is your area of focus for today. Um, and then, you know, we see that match and we can see if they're actually kind of going forward and improving that part of their game. But if you don't have a coach or you don't have access to that, then one of the best things to work on is shot preparation because this is something that a lot of players struggle with and um, without really realizing it. And it's a part of your game that will improve all of your technique if you can get it right. Now I'm gonna put on this side our video about shot preparation so you can kind of check that and see if there's any elements in there that you know you need to work on.